So I've had a few people asking me how I actually record all of the footage from all of my different retro gaming systems. Well, today I'm very excited because I finally, as you can see here, got everything set up and ready to record. So I've got eight retro systems down here, all hooked up and ready to go at just the press of a button. This can not only display the games on both of these screens here, but it can actually send a HDMI signal to my computer on the other side of the room for the capture card and for the streaming software as well. So basically what I've done is I've got the best quality cable that I could possibly get for each system. And most of those cables go into the start block up here, which has switches on the top and it lets you switch from one system to the other. Behind the screen here as well, I also have the OSSC and I've also got this HD converter up here and I know some of you are going to say that this isn't a very good converter but there is a good reason why I've got it and that is because the OSSC doesn't work with composite cables so that is why you can see these three composite cables sticking out of it there. So I think a good place to start before I get into how each individual system is hooked up is to actually explain what all these cables are here for and what the different devices that are attached to the wall actually do. So let's start by taking a look at this board behind me. So to explain exactly what everything actually does up here, let's start with this. So this is a four x two HDMI block. So it allows for four different HDMI cables to come in and then two HDMI cables to go out. So this one here in slot B goes to the TV and monitor. So that actually goes to this screen here. And the other one, this one that says capture, this is going to the capture card, which is under my desk there. So this is actually a really long cable that goes all the way down here, all the way across the bottom of the floor and then underneath the desk into the capture card. As for the four inputs, we have the OSSC, which is this device here, and that is a SCART upscaler. So this SCART splitter is coming from here, going around into this, and this is a SCART block that sends one half of it into the OSSC and the other half out into the CRT as well. So you can see there's one there for the CRT, and that sends the signal to this screen, and there's one there that says OSSC as well. And this bit here is coming from here, which has all of these different RGB SCARTs. So we've got one for the Mega Drive, one for the Mister, one for the PS2, one for the Saturn there, and one for the Dreamcast. And there is a loose one here for the GameCube as well. And then there's also this here, which is another SCART block. And this one isn't as high quality as the OSSC, but this one does have some really good features like I mentioned earlier. And using this, this comes down here into this thing here, which is a three in one out output. And there's a switch here, so you can switch between them. This one on the end here, if you have a look at that tag, that is for the PC engine. And this one is for the NES, and you've got the tag there. So these two use these composite cables here. And then by switching that, you can switch whichever one gets output, which goes into this. Making sense so far? And then as well as this, I've also got this to turn everything on and off. So say I want the OSSC to come on, press that switch, and then I'll be able to just flick that and then the OSSC can come on and then flick it again to turn it off. And to save power, just switch it off as well. SCART to HD, that is the one up here. So whenever I press that, that'll light up. And you can see that the lights come on on the side here. And there's buttons up there to change it from SCART to HDMI as well. So that's how I use that one. There's also the four x two HD thing and that actually turns this on and off here. And this piece of paper up here that's got one to four, that explains which one of these numbers it needs to be set to in order to output, depending on what system I've got set up. So say if I wanted to show the PC engine, I would just switch both of these to number one. And the reason you have to do it twice is one's for slot A and one's for slot B, which refers to these two here. This is really good. It seems like it's really high quality. And even though this is a 10 meter long cable, the actual output on the other side of the room still looks really nice. And to power this as well, I put another switch here. So you switch it on and off and that green light turns on there. And then depending on what you want to display on the screens here, you can press these buttons and that swaps between these. Oh yeah, the mist is down there as well. That's another console that I use. So that has got its own switch there. So switch it on and then the fan comes on. And there's two different options for the mister as well, depending on what I want to use. So this HDMI port here isn't actually HDMI. That goes into this VGA cable here, which goes all the way around into this SCART block here, which can then be output onto the TV. And then we've also got two extra cables. These are for the N64 and the GameCube. These both use HDMI because I've got new digital HDMI options for both. And that goes into this one. 
and that is this one here that says HDMI 1 to 3. And this one here, this number 2 one, this comes from this block here. And one of these is a spare cable in case I want to use the switch here on this screen. So I can put the switch on there and use that. And now with that overview out of the way, let's get started by doing a deep dive into how each system is connected. Starting first with the Nintendo 64. And as I'm going through each console, I'll tell you what kind of connections I use to get the best picture quality, as well as what regions of games it plays, and whether they're actually modded or not. So this is actually an unmodded N64, but I do have a HDMI out for it, and that is thanks to this cable here, the RAD 2X. And this basically allows you to use the standard N64 port and then have an output of a micro USB port on the top there. And it looks okay, it's not as good as if you would have an internal modded board that goes in there. And I was looking at one of those, the FX boards, but unfortunately they sold out almost instantly so I couldn't get one. So until I managed to get my hands on them, this is the best alternative. And like I just showed, I do have a full size HDMI port going straight into the splitter up there. And that means that with the N64 at least, I can only play it on the flat screen. And as that is the Japanese N64, I do also have my PAL one here, this Pikachu one, and it's really easy to swap them over. All I need to do is take out the two things on the back and put them in here instead. And thankfully, the power supply for the Japanese and European N64 is interchangeable, so you don't need to worry about a step-down converter or anything like that, which I do with some of the other systems. And then next is the GameCube, and once again, I have a HDMI solution for this one as well. I did actually do a full video about how to get the best picture quality out of the GameCube, so I won't go into all that detail here. I'll leave it up in the eye in the corner and down in the description below. If you want to check that out, if you are interested in getting even better picture out of the GameCube than what you can get through RGB. So very briefly, it's thanks to this device here, which is called the Prism HD adapter, and that actually has a full-size HDMI port, and it uses the GameCube's digital output. So it's a really crisp and clear picture. And like I said, I've also got a SCART connector there as well. In in case I wanted to play the games on the CRT. And then the next console here is the Sega Saturn and this is the first modded console that I've got. So by default it plays in Japanese mode when you can see the red light there that means that it's running in 60 Hertz and it also works with all Japanese games but if you hold down the reset button and the light turns blue then it basically turns this into a PAL Sega Saturn as well so I can run all kinds of games on this and the output that I use for this is just a standard Sega Saturn SCART RGB cable and that goes straight into the OSSC that I've got up there and because the output is 240p that means that you can use the five times integer scale and that is compatible with the Elgato capture card that I've got and the Ava Media capture card. I made sure that it was compatible with both so I can use the OSSC and get incredible crisp and clear five times integer scaling out of the Sega Saturn as well so this is actually the best setup that you can possibly get for the system and I could not be happier. Now coming down to the next shelf, me and Skittles will tell you all about the PS2 that I've got here. So I'm really excited to get this PS2 as well because this is also modded. But the really exciting thing about this PS2 is the fact that it actually has a HDMI slot that's been added into the corner there. And it basically treats the HDMI out of this as a component cable, so you really get the best picture quality possible. And this is also region modded as well, so I can play any game from any region on the PS2. I do also have the other PS2 connectors as well, so I've got RGB SCART and I've got component 2, which I can use if I want to play the games on the CRT at the same time as well, so I do have that option. Now the next console here we have is the Super NT, and I don't I don't actually have an original SNES plugged in, I only actually have this because I think it is such a good improvement, especially if you want really really sharp picture out of the system. And of course this can go all the way up to 1080p, it's region free, whatever region you want to play it's on there. And you can change the games from 50 to 60 hertz as well, so I'm super happy about this. And that is going up straight into the HDMI capture cards up there as well. And then next to that we have a modded Sega Dreamcast, this one is region free and it also has really nice bright blue LEDs inside the controller ports too, which I think is really cool. So I'm really glad to finally have that and to be able to play all of my games that I picked up while I was in Japan 
and that actually uses RGB SCART. I know it's not exactly the best picture quality you can get from the Dreamcast because you can use VGA, but I don't really know of a VGA solution that actually allows you to play it on a regular CRT, which I really like to do. That's why I'm using the RGB SCART. And when that's paired with the OSSC as well, although it is interlaced, so you do get a little bit of judder, it still looks really nice and you can kind of fix that in post using OBS too. And I guess I'll have to lie on the floor for the next few and I had to kick the dog out so I could do this one. So here we have the NES and the Famicom. Unfortunately, the Famicom isn't actually plugged in. It's just there on display at the minute because I do need a step down converter. And since I moved house, I don't really know where that is. But the NES is plugged in and working. And the best picture quality you can get out of the NES without it being modded is by using these AV ports on the side. And that actually gives a really nice clear picture as well and that is plugged in and ready to go at just the push of a button too. I've been really enjoying playing Mega Man 4 on there, and because I'm using the AV cables, that means that I can run it on both the CRT and the flat screen at the same time as well. And next to that, we have the PC Engine Duo R that I picked up in Japan, and that means that I can play both PC Engine and Turbo graphics, CD games, as well as Hue card games as well. It's one of my all-time favorite systems, and I really want to do a full video on it in the future. It's not modded or anything, so it can't play European or American card games but it can play the CD games which is what I'm more interested in and this also uses the same kind of composite cables as the NES does and that goes into the same ports up there and finally we have the Sega Mega Drive here and once again this one isn't modded unfortunately so I do have to suffer through the 50 Hertz speed of some Mega Drive games which I'm sure you know is a huge pain so I will definitely look to upgrade this at some point in the near future. It's basically the only system that I'm not 100% happy with now. It does have a really nice RGB SCART cable though, so the picture quality that you can get out of this paired with the OSSC is incredible. So for an example of how all this actually goes over to the computers, this end cable here that says capture, this one goes all the way down here. You can see the cable there, all the way down to the bottom of the floor here, across this here behind the fan, all the way underneath the radiator into this corner here where it's all tangled up here up into this mess of cables here down into this there's the other side of it and then it goes into this splitter here half of that comes down here into my windows pc which is using an ava media 4k capture card and the other side comes up here to the Elgato card which is actually taped to the underneath of the desk there and if I want to play the games on the screen up here that's what this extra HDMI cable coming out this side's for and this USB cable is actually plugged in the back of my MacBook which is part of this box here so you can see what's in here HD60S is the capture card that goes into there and then as for the software that I use on the Mac I found the best way of capturing is actually through QuickTime, not through OBS, although I do have both. So to do it in QuickTime, it's really simple. You just press File, New Movie Recording, and as long as you've got it selected on this little drop down here, then it'll come up straight away. And over on the Windows side, we use OBS, and I can actually use that for streaming as well. So uh, live stream, if I go on this one, and if I switch the camera on, and if I plug it in using this cable here, and then if we choose Camlink 4K from this option here, then you can see me up there. So that is how I can stream and record games using the Windows PC, or if I just want to record footage, then I can do it straight on my MacBook and then go straight into Final Cut there and add the actual project into the actual timeline. So there you go, that's how I use it across both computers. And here's how my camera is set up. So it's on this stand here. This is a micro HDMI cable, which if we come round here, is actually plugged into the back of the screen here, into this cam link here. And I've also got another one for the RX100, which is the smaller camera, which is plugged in on this side of the room. So if I did ever want to record games and record myself here, all I'd need to do is switch on the RX100. And let's see whether this works actually, because I haven't tried this in a while. So. Let's turn this on, so you can see, there you go, the RX100 is connected. And that should, in theory, come out of here, and somehow go over to this using the RX100 capture. So let's try it. Let's change that to USB 3 capture. And yeah, there I am, from at the back of the, uh, at the, back of the room. I can't exactly remember how this is all plugged in, but 
Yeah, if I do that. There I am on that side of the room, using that camera. So I can stream and record from both angles. So maybe if I wanted to use the CRT to play the game on and still be able to stream on Twitch or record it to YouTube with, with video as well. And you can see my terrible mess of cables underneath the desk too. And it is a standing desk, so I can adjust all the cables here and then just press this number two here and it will go back down into the seated position. And I've also got these two lights here, if we're talking about how the setup works. And these can be brighter or dimmer just by turning this round here. And there's two of them, and I can also just turn them on and off at the press of this button too. And I also got some foam panels on the wall, which really help to dampen the sound. I really hope this was an interesting and informative video for you. Let me know what your retro gaming setups are like down in the comments below. Let me know whether you'd like more in-depth videos like this on how I actually make my videos in the future. Subscribe if you enjoyed it, of course. Check out Patreon to join all the people going across the bottom of the screen right now. And that is it for this episode. I'll see you very soon for the next one. Goodbye.